Believe it or not, the UCI Gravel Switzerland is my first ever competitive gravel event. And I was in with the elites. Now I learned a lot considering this was my first proper gravel race. And there were lots of long climbs, short, sharp, steep climbs, technical descents, well, technical climbs too. And on the final nine kilometer climb, I had to dig pretty deep to catch that one ride I could see for ages in front of me. But did I catch it? Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This video is all about the UCI Gravel Switzerland event taking place in Villar. Now these type of events are slightly different to what you've seen maybe in the US, like the Lifetime Grand Prix for example. In a sense, you can finish in the top 25% of these and technically qualify for your category to represent your country at the UCI World Championships. Because I was categorized as an elite because of my race license, Finishing in the top 25% of just the 70 or so riders that were in my group would be a challenge. However, this was not my goal. My goal was to pick up some experience and see what this gravel is all about. Now, in some ways, this event really suited me because there was a lot of climbing, 100 kilometers and 2,800 meters. The final climb would be about nine kilometers long, an average of seven to eight percent. Now, because it's on gravel, that would take a long time to complete. However, it's not just a case of going uphill, you have to go downhill as well. There's also a lot of factors that come into play, such as your equipment, uh, tire choices, and just how comfortable you are riding off-road. Now, let's be real here. I ride gravel, I ride off-road, usually in the winter, because in Wales, it's a lot more fun, I've now found, to ride off-road when the weather's not good at all, and just have some fun and adventure, and yet still get the hours in on the bike. So I can't really remember the last time I rode my gravel bike, not properly anyway, in anger. I certainly don't do any indoors on it, I leave that to indoors or out on the road. Okay, so, pressure off. Excuses are in. <laughs> so like I said, this was taking place in Villar, which is in the Vaux region of Switzerland. And as you'll see from the video, there's some epic places to ride around here, both on-road and off-road. Now the nature of the course, a lot of the climbing comes in the first sort of 40 kilometers, and then there's a big chunk of downhill, flat, if you will, and then there's a lot of climbing approximately eight to 900 meters to climb back up to the finish at Villar. Now there were some big names here, or the riders that I recognized at least were Chad Hager, ex former World Tour, Tour de France cyclist, Cam Mason, who is a phenomenal cyclocross rider, multiple uh, titles, national titles to his name, and enjoy watching him racing in the super prestige races on TV in the winter, also has a YouTube channel as well. And the other name I recognize was actually Oliver Godfoy, who rides for the Balwaza Trek team, uh, and actually won, I think, the Mallorca 312 the year that I did it. Since then, we've actually messaged each other a couple of times. Now, spoiler alert, he actually won this event, so chapeau. Right, let's get into it then. So the start and the first 25 kilometers I really didn't know what to expect. I kind of assumed it would be a cyclocross style start and I wasn't disappointed. The only thing was it was uphill so it was even harder to get going. And as a road rider, I'm still yet to get used to this feeling of a very, very spongy tire underneath me. There's a reason why I prefer the road I think over gravel and that's because of the the, the sheer resistance you have to overcome when you're just riding along. So during this event, I had to work out like what is the etiquette? like. What do people do in these gravel events? Uh, I, even if you're a little bit further back or if you're at the front, I had to figure all this out. So I was a complete first timer. Like I've done battle on the beach, I've done some cyclocross events, but I've never done something like this. So the first couple of kilometers were whizzing on the tarmac. I actually passed Charlie, she'd clambered out to the campsite and taken a video of me going past just on the back of the group. Like I said, there was about 70 of us in that elite group. 
And it was a good thing actually that it was tarmac for the first section because it gave me a chance just to get a feel for how my body was doing. Uh, of course, I was coming down with an illness which then turned into a viral infection, a uh, chest infection, uh, actually the day after this event. So I was coming down with something, but I had to know what were my limits today. So thankfully we had this tarmac section to get myself into it. I actually lost contact with the group just 10 kilometers in. But the first 10, 15, 20, 25 kilometers of this event were very grippy, hard, uphill, very short downhills. Like it was just up, felt like it was uphill all the time. But even though I'd lost contact with the group, I knew that this is a long day. Like I had in my mind that this was gonna take like five hours and it would be slow going and people would generally get tired towards the end. So I just had to keep plugging away. Even if I'd lost the group really early, or I'd lost a lot earlier than I thought, I would keep plugging away things and you know treat every rider that's in front of me as another target to focus on. So during this first 25K, we actually climbed to the highest point of the whole race, which was just a smidge under 1800 meters. And we popped out at the top of the Col de la Croix, which is the road climb that I won the time trial on the day before, or the evening before. And we hopped on the road for just a very short section, and then we jumped the curb and we hit what was probably uh, one of the hardest sections of the whole course. I, I wasn't expecting it. It was extremely steep very loose gravel you have to be very careful about where you were picking your lines and there was a couple of people that had to get off and walk and I knew I wasn't just with nobody like the riders that were there were obviously elite riders they, they kind of knew what they were doing and like for them to get off and walk at some point like I knew it must be quite tricky but you know I have ridden gravel a little bit and I've also got a little bit of what per kilogram to spare and I would just pray that I could keep grip at these crucial moments and thankfully I did and I got over the top and I managed to make up a couple of places just by riding that short 500 meter 18% section. Now let's talk about equipment because I think it makes a massive difference. I don't think actually it does make a massive difference. You know I'm a massive fan. I'm a big fan of Dylan Johnson's stuff and he's definitely one for equipment choices and you know really thinking about these things and taking it to the nth degree i'm not so much like that when it comes to gravel because like i said it's something that i only ride in the winter when the weather's bad and i just want to enjoy riding my bike it adds a different element to my cycling it might be something i do more in the future but today for this event i was essentially not invested enough to worry about what equipment I was using. However, I was running the Panaracer Gravel King Semi Slicks, 43 millimeters, and running them about 20 PSI. Now, 43 mil is about as wide as I can get on this Factor LS. I did think about investing in different tires, but then I thought the cost per use, I'm not actually gonna ride much more, so, Shall I just stick with the tires I've already had? So that's what influenced my decision to just stick with tires, the Panaracers that I already own. But to be honest, they rode really well. There was a lot of road section to deal with, so the really slick centered line was, was perfect actually. And then of course the, the gravel, there was only a couple of tricky sections, you know, corners and stuff that I had to be careful on, but really speaking, I was kind of okay. Puncture protection wise, I had a, I had a clean run. I had zero mechanicals at all throughout the whole event. And as many people have told me, that is part of the game. Uh, I'm, I'm wearing my, my camelback bladder down the front of my jersey. And I was again going with the strategy of having 120 grams of carbs per 750 ml bottle on my bike. And then drinking half of it per hour and diluting it with the water in the camelback. Worked perfectly again. And it's a strategy I've implemented over the last couple of events. Again, I relied on just gels as well, so nutritionally, I was going well. So around about halfway into the event, I started to realize that this terrain was a lot faster than I anticipated. Whenever I've done you know, a tempo ride or an endurance ride on gravel here in South Wales, I'm always amazed at how slow I go. Like at least 80, 19 kilometers per hour average, and that's with some fast you know, straight descent. 
but this was this was fast this was 20 25 kilometers per hour average so far in fact this point that we're about to get to i start to average closer to 28 kilometers per hour but from 25 to 50 kilometers in it was the main sort of technical section of the course there's a lot of beautiful scenery in this section as well and i didn't really get a chance as much as i'd like to look at it I was having to focus too much on, you know, the drain covers, uh, the drains that were running across the gravel roads, the, you know, the big rocks in certain places, the corners where the loose gravel was, where the slightly grippier gravel was, and obviously some of the faster people that are coming past me on some of these descents. But like I said, this is where I learned a good few things. This section, about the 50 kilometer mark, I started averaging nearly upwards of 30 kilometers per hour. So these are a few things I learned. So some riders are seriously good downhill. These events involve a lot of solo riding for the most part. And it's as much about going fast as it is riding thoughtfully. Now what I mean by that is you can take, you know, the fastest lines down these descents and you can really rip down it and things, but I saw that happen maybe six times to six different people who would come past me on the descent and I'd be like, whoa, they're, they're absolutely pushing it. Maybe they're in control, but maybe two minutes later, I saw them at the side of the road, putting their thumb on their tire and like hoping it would seal. Slow and steady wins the race, <laughs> except I didn't win the race. So we emerged at the other side of the Col de la Croix Valley and we hit the tarmac. And I was told that they wanted to do the descent into the valley uh, off-road but the weather had made that section a lot worse and we actually had to ride a road section more than I think they wanted us to. Um, so it was, I think it was a good call by the organisation, not that I knew what that off-road section was like but even for me I think riding on the road uh, suited me better. So I wasn't complaining about it, I enjoyed the off-road descent section that we did before we got to this um, big road section but certainly I think a lot of people would have enjoyed uh, more um, gravel. But it is what it is. It's dynamic. I was learning that these things are constantly throwing things at you. On this road section, this is probably from about halfway to about 75 kilometers. Um, from the mid distance mark, we hit a climb called the Fokla. I don't know if you pronounce the Z. And a big fast descent. Now this climb actually before the descent was uh, a pretty substantial one but obviously being on gravel bikes and tires and whatnot like we were going a bit slower than we would be on road bikes so it took a while to get over that climb and in my head i was still thinking like a roadie i was like oh it's only gonna take us a couple of minutes to get over this and then 10 minutes later you know we still got like six seven hundred meters to go so i hit this long fast descent down into the valley and i've done this descent actually a couple of days previously and it was it was a wonderful section of road and actually I had no difficulties at all. I was in a little group, my tires were rolling really well down there and then we hit a little bit of traffic and we got a little bit disjointed and I ended up being split from that group I was in. There was only a couple of riders but I knew we were coming up to a big flat section and it was the worst time to lose that group. At the end of the day, you know, it's not closed roads so, you know, situations like this can happen. We got into the valley though and there was this amazing single like lane gravel. Uh, it really reminded me of, of home riding like down canal paths. I nearly had an altercation with a little old lady who was coming around the corner with her like shopping trolley or whatever it was and I wish I got that on the GoPro because it, it was a bit of a I'm gonna have to bail out option here and, and I had nowhere to go and thankfully I saved it but it, I was not expecting her to be there. <laughs> but thankfully I made it down this section. I could always see the group that had left me behind through the traffic just in front of me and I was sort of just gonna get there, just gonna get there and I never did. But we passed the UCI cycling center and a couple of those riders actually stopped for a feed there. And a couple of riders had obviously gone off ahead and stayed ahead while those had been itching to get some fuel in down them. And we would actually see a couple of those riders that had kept going, the ones that had lost through the traffic, uh, in this last 25 kilometers. So this final 25 kilometers was the highlight for me. So I'd ridden some of it already before, so I knew 
that the, the sections were going to be quite grippy, so quite hard, um, especially on tired legs. We're going to be three, three and a half hours in at this point. Again, much faster than I thought we'd be. Uh, obviously, the tarmac section helped, but certainly if I look back over the first half of the event, even on the gravel, it wasn't actually that slow at all. Uh, chapeau to the riders off in, in, in the lead and in the chasing group so because they must have been absolutely flying, and I can't even comprehend that. So we got into this final 20 kilometers and I knew we had a section coming through the vineyards that would prove to be incredibly decisive. Now the group I was in that actually caught me on the flat cycle path, if you will, through the valley. Um, there was a good group of I'd say 15 of us there and we got to the section and it was almost like a, like a farm track. There was two lanes either side too narrow tire width lanes and I decided to, to ride in the group for as long as I thought uh, would be comfortable and then I swung up to the other side and I just went up the left hand side of everybody and I made this decision because I knew the next section was going to be technical, I knew it could be slow and there was a very steep bit involved that could create a little bit of um, chaos and people could end up having to dismount and walk up that section. So I didn't want to get caught out in any way. Uh, and I also thought it would give me a head start for this final climb. So we knew that there was rain forecast. Thankfully it hadn't come in yet. And to be honest, it wouldn't really have changed much on this bit anyway. If it had been raining from start to finish, it would have been a different story. So coming through the vineyards on the little ups and downs and the rollers, I was in my element. Like I felt good, everything was good and I'd left the group that I was in and I was now on my own. Not really thinking about bridging to anybody, I just kind of thought, let's try and finish strong. And also not even having a clue what position I was in anyway. Obviously losing the front group 10 kilometers in wasn't ideal, but I had no idea where I was. So this last section, we were like coming across main roads, we were jumping like on gravel, main road off gravel on the other side, you know, through some farm tracks, some of it was grassy, some of it was gravelly. It was all different kind of stones as well, like not just not just smooth gravel, like proper rocky stuff. And there was a couple of moments where I thought, ooh, like I can feel my rim going here against the, in, against the rock. But thankfully we made it through, popped out onto one of these final steep uh, tarmac climbs. And I think this is where we started merging with the smaller loop. There was only two loops and the smaller loop I think was merging with us here and I was getting passed by a couple of riders that were really going strong. So I assumed, not that I'd seen them earlier in the day, so I had assumed that they were coming through on the shorter loop a lot stronger than us. So there was one final single track that proved to be very difficult and beyond my skill level. It was tree roots everywhere. There was like it was starting to get a bit slippery, it was dusty, and it also just didn't appeal to me to try and commit to riding the section and then falling over. So instead, I took the bold move to jump off and to run it. Uh, it was, this was the only time I had to get off in the whole event, and to be honest, I'm not ashamed to say it either. Um, so we, we got over the top of that, down a really steep descent, and then onto the final eight, nine kilometer climb. And this climb was just, felt like it was endless, but because there was like switchbacks, there were people on the side of the road cheering, we were merging with the smaller group, so we were catching other riders at some point, it took my mind off how challenging it really was. Now the gravel was going in between sort of, you know, quite rough to quite smooth, we were having like concrete slabs in sections, it was kind of like... I guess maybe an old road that had just you know really deteriorated potentially and we were just carving our way up the side of the mountain you know the main road would go this way and we would just be taking this scenic route through the trees the rain was starting to come down and you know i was battling with this rider who was actually behind me i could always see him there there about like 15 20 seconds behind me in red I was like, oh, maybe I can hold him off. Like, maybe I can hold him off. I think, I'm pretty sure he's in my event, so I could just keep him at a distance. And then, probably about three kilometers from the top, there was this like longer straight section, and I was able to look up and I could see another rider, and he was going roughly the same pace as me. And when you see a rider doing roughly the same pace as you, 
you always feel like that person's got a target on their back. It was a very slow progression of catching this rider and I could see the kilometers tick by and I thought, if I catch this rider before the finish, that will make my day. So that became my goal. In that final three kilometers, I knuckled down and I tried to close the gap on this rider. Now there was a couple of sections, I knew we were leaving the gravel soon and it was gonna flatten off. So I tried to make the most of that steep gravel section, but actually I didn't really make much inroads. But when we took the sharp right and we got onto the tarmac, actually this was where I closed the gap the most because I think that rider could sense that they were close to the finish. And they could also sense that I was chasing them as well because on one of the switchbacks, they gave a good look down and they could see, you know, you can tell, you know, when someone's in your event or when someone's chasing you, you can tell the speed, you can judge it. I think we've all been there in that situation. And on this slightly flat section and before it like was rising up for the last kilometer, I could start to get a sense that I was really catching and that maybe this rider had eased off because, you know, the finish was just just there and it was a really tense final kilometer i was out the saddle i was driving it i was giving it everything my heart rate just went like straight up even though i thought i couldn't really give any more it literally came down to the last couple of hundred meters and i went past and we crossed the line virtually together i think he just about got on my wheel and we were coming across the line together uh just as it was raining just as it was like you know misting up and you couldn't really see anything so it was a really sort of atmospheric way to finish and I have to say I really enjoyed it like in the moments afterwards I was kind of like oh, glad that's done and also felt a bit and anticlimactic because you cross the line but there was no real sort of crowd there you had to descend a little bit to get to the actual finish you know to get your your medal and everything so it wasn't until a couple of hours afterwards I was like, oh, I was really proud of it. That was really good fun. I really enjoyed it. And actually, yeah, I probably will do another one. But that one was memorable. It was hilly. There was just some awesome scenery. It was really good fun gravel. Like nothing overly challenging. A couple of those, you know, steep sections and the routes and stuff that I had to get off on a single track. But aside from that, I had a really good day out. So... I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe it's whetted your appetite for a bit of gravel in Europe. Let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.